Hello everybody, welcome, welcome to another edition of the Poetry of Painting. So this week I am going to be joined by the lovely Margaret Kareem, who was should have been on a show a little while back, but unfortunately due to the modern wonders of technology, um, we had a little few problems with that. So uh, that was disappointing that we couldn't hear her poem then, but we've got all that sorted out now. And Margaret's going to join us tonight from all the way from Gibraltar to read her beautiful poem for us, um, which I will talk to you about in just a moment. So let me just bring Margaret onto the screen. Here we go. Hi, Margaret, how are you? Hello, hello Fiona. <laughs> you, you okay? Yeah, thank goodness that everything went okay today. Excellent. <laughs> Let's hope nothing, I mean, we, you know, it happens, life happens. I've had a power cut during a show book once before. Hopefully that will not happen tonight, touching wood yes. there or up here. Um, so, you know, <laughs> these things happen and we just get on with it. So uh, welcome to the show. It's your first one. You. I hope it won't be your last. I hope you'll enjoy it. And um, well, well I, I hope my nerves, I hope my nerves will um, will be OK. You'll be absolutely fine. You're great. We've been we've had time to chat. We've yes. you know, had some trial runs and we chat away like nobody's business. So that's brilliant. I know. So, yeah. So um, afterwards, hopefully we can tell people how we actually came to meet and everything else. But first of all, uh, we are going to be talking tonight about my painting, which is called Golden Trees. It's on the wall here behind me. And I will put it on the screens because it is quite small there behind me. Um, it's 10 by 8 inches and it's in oils on gold leaf on a canvas panel. So once again, my wonderful gold leaf that I'm a little bit in love with at times. So I'm mm. sure some of you will be uh, well aware of, aware of that fact by now. And I apply the gold leaf first and then paint on top with oils and just love the effects that it creates and the, the warmth and the richness that it gives to a painting. So apart from the title, Margaret doesn't or didn't when she wrote the poem know anything else about this painting. So her poem is going to be her reaction, her how it resonates with her and, and what the painting said to her. So Margaret, I, I don't know if you want to say anything first before you read your poem. Um, um, yeah, I, I was, uh, this painting, you sent me three and this one really, originally another one resonated because of, I love the atmosphere that it, it was, um, uh, it, it was in a set, it's a, a little cottage in a hamlet mm. and it was darker, smoky colors. And yes. originally that yes. one really appealed to me, but then I looked up and I saw this one and it was just that beautiful glow. Uh, and it just drew me in the colors because they, they're cheerful. They're, uh, they just spoke to me and I thought, no, no, this is, and the, the poem actually wrote itself. Uh, you know, I, did, I tweaked it a tiny little bit but it actually yeah. wrote itself. So I thought, I think I've chosen well, you know, this is yes. the, the poem yeah. I'm meant to write for this piece. Brilliant, lovely. Well, it sounds like it was the one for you. So it hopefully is. in the future we'll it find It still is, it still well. is. <laughs> good, good. So would you like to read us your poem? Oh, sorry, I forgot to mention to everybody, Welcome, whether you're listening live or on replay, and please do put some comments up, uh, ask questions. Um, last week on the show, there was an issue with Facebook where people couldn't make comments, but hopefully that won't be the same tonight. So if you would like to make comments, ask questions of myself or Margaret, please feel free to do that. It'd be lovely to have you joining in. So sorry about that, Margaret, just forgot <laughs> to mention that earlier. So if you'd like to read your poem, I would very much like to hear okay. it. Bear with me because um, as I say, the nerves might show in my voice, but I'll do my best. Okay. Grove of noble trees, prepare for hibernation. Branches in the breeze, shiver in anticipation. Begin to dance, sway, 
last brittle leaves gently float away onto nature's carpet, brown, yellow, gold, spectacular sight to behold. Blue sky above, autumnal colours surround, myriad russet shades, season's beauty astounds. Peaceful scene, glorious countryside, resplendently bathed in October sunshine. And that was my poem. Oh, oh that's beautiful. Thank you, Margaret. I love that, the imagery that you've created with the words. And, and it just really fits the painting so well. So... Oh, magic. Rosie's joined us and said hi just in time. Thanks, Rosie. So now we know that at least the comments are working this week. <laughs> Good old Facebook. Thank you. So um, I hope you enjoyed that poem as much as I did, Rosie, because it was beautiful. So, uh, yeah, it it just I love the way that you've just woven that whole story into it, Margaret. Really lovely. <laughs> I, I love Fiona. I, I I think you probably know that I'm. Although in conversation, I just go off on tangents, but in my poetry, I like I use really few words. Mm. Um, it, it's it's my it's my style. It's how I enjoy yes. you know how I enjoy writing and it just comes to me I, and I don't understand how I can go off on a tangent and yet um it, in my writing it's so brief I really don't yeah. <laughs> it, it's odd and you, you really do have very much your own style because I, I look at your poems on online on Facebook in the groups and and they are quite short sentences slightly yes. varying lengths but it's very very direct very when I say hard hitting I don't mean it it's brutal or mm -hmm. um you know upsetting it but it is very direct and cuts to the chase and says so yes. much with few words which I yes. love it's it, it's not your, your style you. is not flowery and you know no no overflowing it, it's just you say it just what you need to say with that conciseness um which is lovely really you know thank you <laughs> it is your own style you've you've made it your own and and uh, it works really really well so thank you Fiona I do I so. work I do work very hard to um progress and to enhance skills um <sighs> And I, I like to remain fresh, you know, mm. uh, which is why when, for example, I don't care if no one likes it. I don't care if I don't get any comments, but it's wonderful when all of a sudden someone new will in the poetry groups will actually say, oh, I like this. And then I know that I'm doing well because yes. it, it, I'm maintaining a little bit of freshness, you know, um, yes. it, I don't, do you have that in your paintings as well? Do you do you sort of try to enhance your skills? Or do you change mm. your style? Do you maintain your style? Um, very much always trying to develop and grow and, you know, try new things sometimes, um, you know, but it may be that I try some new technique on a, a test right. piece or something, you know, rather than, um, you know, thinking, oh, I have to make this work to make a painting yes, that I will, yeah. you know, um, put up in, in public sort of thing. Oh, Rosie said, lovely layered painting too. Thank you very much for your lovely <laughs> comments, Rosie, about the poem as well. Thank you. Um, but yes, it's it's seeing what other people have done. Um, I'm sure you read other poets' work as well. And, yeah. and not trying to copy anything, but sometimes something just resonates and you think, I wonder if I could use that, yes. maybe adjust it a little bit, you know, in something, you know, we think, you know, as I said to other people, sometimes, you know, a particular colour combination, mm. you know, so, for example, in this painting, I've used sort of muted, mauvey greys in the shadows with a little bit of the blue coming through in the sky, and mm. just a different combination from some of the other paintings that I've been doing lately just to try something different see how it works yes um I know with Rosie I think... Rosie does a lot of 
house portraits and things for people. She takes okay. commissions, by the way, everybody. So have a look at Rose's Facebook page. Um, but I know that she's just done a really lovely painting of a bluebell woods, which is quite oh. different from yeah. some uh, from the house portraits and also from some other paintings that she's done, which were not mm. house portraits. So yeah. it's trying something different. And in that case, it's worked really well. Um, sometimes we might try something different and we think mm, it was good to try it and I might keep a little bit of it to go forwards, but it's not something for me you know yes. I, I might see somebody uh, I've got a friend who demonstrates using pen and ink and, and using cola pens which okay. are made from old uh, like a cola can and yeah. you cut it and make a nib from it and use and it, it produces a very different sort of line and mm -hmm. she makes it look such fun and so mm -hmm. interesting that I think oh I'd love to have a go with that um, oh, Rose is saying thank you, giving Rosie a plug there. <laughs> um, and and I think yes, I would love to have a go with that, and then maybe splash some watercolor on once the ink's yes. dried, or you know. But it's also getting around to doing it, and it's something yes. that I probably would try and think. Well, it was fun, and I've yeah, I've done that, but it's maybe it's not for me because. I yeah. probably wouldn't be able to do it anywhere near it as well as my friend does because that's her thing, whereas oils are my thing. But it's still good to try different things sometimes. I think um, you're you're right. How I feel is I never I'm often I admire other people, you know, the way they write. Mm. And I take a little bit of that, but I don't want my voice to change. I want yeah. to maintain whatever I write. I want to maintain that. That's my focus to maintain my yeah. voice. Um, mm. So I, I think I don't know if I, I mentioned to you that I did um, 100. Um, it was in one of the poetry groups. It was um, 100 poetry challenges. And basically wow. it was 100 different forms of, of poems, of poetry. Yes. And... <clears throat> So it ranged from sonnets to um, limericks to all, all manner of things. And some were me medieval forms. Um, I'd, I hadn't heard of most of them. But mm. it was so interesting because they taught me they had their own rhythm. They had their own um, just different, uh, each one you had to follow uh, syllab different syllable counts. You had mm -hmm. to adjust the, because of course, when many of them were, were written, language was totally different. And nice. the rules were set for that language. So trying to adapt that to language today was really, really difficult, mm -hmm. but I enjoyed it so much yes. but what i tried mm. to do was in each of those forms i tried to maintain my own voice um i did quite well in 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 the challenges and for me it was such an achievement because i'd never i only did started in this poetry malarkey uh two years not even two years ago mm. and i've come i've learned so much about writing, yeah. Yeah. about myself. Um, it, it, it's quite, you know, I value myself. It's given me such confidence, confidence that yeah. I, I don't know where it's come from. I really don't know. And all of a sudden, I'm so, so confident in, in the way I feel about myself. And I, I, I can express myself. I go off in my eccentric way, but still, I don't apologize for it. You know, this is the way yeah. I am. I know what I'm talking about and I will say it how I wish yeah. to say it. And so it's, it's um, this is, yeah, yeah. I can't believe that poetry has given me this, th this wonderful tool. I suppose it was yeah. always in me, but all of a sudden yes. the lockdown yeah. circumstances, it, it's quite amazing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Sam has joined us. Hi, Sammy. Thanks for coming on. I um, hope you enjoyed the poem. Oh, you may not have heard the poem, Sammy, in which case you must <laughs> watch on replay to hear it because it's beautiful. 
Um, but yeah, so you, you know, you're talking about finding your voice. In fact, a friend of Rosie, Sammy, and myself as well. Yeah. Uh, she she came to creativity relatively later. You know, when and stopped her career in the corporate world because it was just burning her out. And, yes. Um, oh, Sammy says she missed the poem, but watch it on replay. Listen to it, Sammy. It's absolutely gorgeous. Thank um, you. And and then, you know, she's found now that that's where she was meant to be, where she was meant to end up. Not yes. not that she should have necessarily done it 20 years ago or whatever. Mm. It, it's, you know, everything in the right time. But uh, and she's blossomed into that. It's mm. amazing. And, and what she, you know, creates now is beautiful. So, you know, I think sometimes you just need a, a trigger like the pandemic that's right. To, in your case, you know, with the poetry, just to give you that opportunity to sit back, take stock. Where am I? What am I doing? Mm -hmm. We can't go out and, you know, eat out. We can't go out drinking. We can't visit people. And, and then that's sometimes when, you know, a lot of people I've found in, in fact, on the show, I've had several people who've only started like yourself in the last couple of years Yes. Um, so I think I'm 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 a new poet sort of platform here mm -hmm. almost. Um, not everyone. Some some of my poets have been writing for a lot longer. But yeah, you know it it's something that you've you've had that break and it gives you that opportunity and it gives to, you... to take stock and and for these things to come to the surface. What I so. what I find really strange is when people call me a poet. Because I still yes. think of a poet as being one of these very super intelligent people. Um, yeah, I've got this image in my mind, you know, of, of the, what poets are. And, and yes. I, I thought to myself, and recently I thought to myself, well, you know what? I am a poet. Yes, <laughs> and it's, absolutely. And it's so, it, it's nice, you know, to say that to yourself and l look at some some of your writing and think, well, actually, it's OK. You know, it might not be brilliant. It might not be highbrow. But hey, it's it's OK. It's, uh, it's and yours. Exactly. And mm. enjoying something as well, enjoying it mm. and not caring if if others like it, if they don't mm. just to enjoy something and lose mm. time. Mm. You sit I mean, I sit here in my cosy corner and I lose hours and hours lost yeah. in this wonderful world that I've created or that I'm about to create. And it's, mm. I, I don't care if, if if other people think, oh, gosh, well, you know, thing is what's she well, doing there? She's well, wasting her life sitting in that yeah. corner for hours on end. And but also it really doesn't fact. bother me. It's yeah. wonderful. And I, I expect it's the same for you, Fiona, when you lose yourself in your paintings. Mm. Yeah. It's just and, and lovely. The thing is as well, that not caring whether other people like it means nope. that you are being authentic. You're creating exactly. what is in you. You know, you're letting that out. Yes. You're creating something that you think other people will like. And yeah. that's the same with the painting. You know, I hope people will like them. That's it. You hope. Them. Exactly. But... If I create it, I have to be happy with what I've created, not yes. just, oh, it, it's, you know, it's a saleable thing. You know, it's it's got to be from inside. Yes. Um, and I know my other artist friends are, are very much the same. You know, it um, with Sammy, for example, Sammy really goes deep into the, her subject beforehand. Mm. Even, you know, she writes an essay on it, which is just amazing and you know, I've been privileged to hear some of that and then starts creating the painting, which may still then, I believe, take a slightly different path from that, which yeah. might have envisioned, envisaged to start with. But, you know, we each have our own ways of working and it's being true to yourself, being authentic, that I think it shows in your work, whether that's your poetry. Yes, I think it's true. Paintings, yeah. Um, you and know, you and leave... It, uh, with the poem, the poetry I like, the person and and with paintings, well, any anything creative, I like it because. It, or if someone decorates their home, and they've enjoyed doing it, they leave a little bit of themselves. You, you can mm. see their essence in in 
in what they've created, what they're trying. I love that. I hate bland. I hate people that don't experiment, who who mm. who are, are driven by outside concerns, what others will feel or, you know, it, it's so wonderful to express yourself however, however you wish to, whether it's with cooking or decorating a home or paintings or in your garden. But it yes. it's so yeah. wonderful when you look at something and you think, I see that person in there. I know what that person is like or part of, you know, part of that person. And I think that that is what appeals to me about um, creative, yeah. certain creative works. If I see yeah. that, I don't care if you've got, let's just say, a Picasso up on the wall and there's someone else, someone else's work there who isn't well known, mm. but you it, it just draws you in. You you yeah. can't describe it. It's because you see that person's soul almost in there. Um, well, I think with all creatives, we all put a bit of our soul into whatever it is we're yeah, creating. Yeah. And in fact, we've got some comments here. Sammy says the authentic self. Oh, that's lovely. So beautiful, even if it is only to our own eye. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. And and yes, Steph. Steph is asking, is it a Frida Kahlo? Yes, design? yes. It is indeed. <laughs> it is. So, um, it's. I'll but, tell uh, you a little story behind these. Um, I went to a car boot sale in Gibraltar. This was about ten years ago, and um, they were not a car boot sale. It was a church sale, and mm. there were two young Spanish boys there with their little table and all their bits and pieces all all over it, and underneath. I saw, do you remember the, those old, um, I don't know if they still do do them, in museums they used to do the prints, calendars, like prints of um, oh, yeah. uh, Monet and, you know, all sorts. Yes. Anyway, this, the one behind me, there were 12, 12 of them. It, it was uh, cellophane, the whole, the, the um, calendar was cellophane. It was from a German um, museum cellophane all together I, I picked it up and I thought oh I love this so much it hadn't been opened or or anything and it cost it cost me 20 pounds for I think there were tw 12 to 15 paintings and of course when we moved to this place 11 years ago I bought no sorry I bought it about nine years ago but we hadn't decorated to our style when we moved here and as soon mm. as we decided to decorate, I had them all framed, well, six of them framed, and they're in every room. And yeah. it's just, they're so beautiful to look at. Um, and her story, of course, her story just inspires me. Uh, mm. And I, I just, they're beautiful. I could look at them time <gasps> after time after time. I've still got another six or so under the bed. Yes. Yes. Um waiting for i don't know maybe if we redecorate or maybe i'll give them to someone but uh, i have given a couple of uh, away actually because people that have come around have said oh i really love those and so i've mm. given them you know because anything for a good home i i don't mind giving them away yeah but i love i love this is one of my favorites the one behind me yeah that's a lovely story as well repurposing you know some you know using it and show and also instead of it just being kept in cellophane it's actually oh, on the wall to be enjoyed every day exactly. but it lovely. was i forgot to say this you see my mind wanders i forgot to say that when i picked it up it was already 15 years old in that oh. cellophane 15 yeah. years in that cellophane and i thought yeah. to, but then i thought to myself well it's meant to be for me and so, <laughs> because sometimes I do believe that sometimes these things happen. They're just meant to be yours or something is meant to happen. And yeah. that's how I felt about yeah. my Frieda's. <laughs> oh, that's a lovely story. Yeah. And I'm, you know, I'm very much in favour of repurposing and reusing and yes. recycling and everything where we can. And, you know, instead of, you know, going out and buying something else, you've, you know, you found that exactly, and you've, you've made exactly, use of it. and you've also, you know, it, it's now being appreciated rather than being yeah. kept in a drawer or something and and not seeing the light of day. 
which, Fiona, we, people. They, sorry, sorry, Fiona. Yeah, well, no, I know people pe invest in art. Yeah, but to me, if if you're buying a painting, mm -hmm. and then just to have it stuck away in a vault somewhere. Exactly. Exactly. And nobody's in, nobody can enjoy the painting. No, nobody no. can appreciate it. So. Stephanie it said it was definitely meant to be with your freedom. <laughs> what, what, um, and I find, I mean, I've done it in the past as well, that you're unhappy with yourself for whatever reason. And so you just buy something hoping that's going to fill in, fill a gap. Thankfully, I'm no longer, I don't know if it's age or whether, I, I don't know what it is, but I'm no longer like that. And most of my clothes now I buy from the charity. I, I always have bought a lot of clothes and items from charity shops. But now, in the last three or four years, I refuse to buy anything from uh, a shop, a normal mm -hmm. shop. Um, I try to buy everything i mean i've got ev i've got everything i need fiona mm. everything um but if i need something apart from obviously underwear night night things those i, I buy from the shops but clothes mm. ordinary clothes shoes even um i try to buy most things items for the kitchen um uh, vases uh lamps Whatever I can, yeah. I will buy. Yeah. Most of them are new. People have bought them with clothes. You can tell they've been worn once. Some have got tags still in them. Um, wow. The same with, with lamps. Some people change their kitchens, for example, every six months. And and you think to yourself, my goodness, why? And, of course, the tea towels have got to um match certain the kettles so the kettle's got to go you know a new kettle's got to be bought bought and you think to yourself this is crazy mm. so i find yeah. some amazing things in in the charity shop yeah well you know we're such a throwaway society and i think that just has to change yep. so yes yes know, for this planet's sake and for all of us sake you know and, and oh, generations yeah, yeah. To come. i mean that's, that's so right important, you know so um Yes, well, we're we're getting towards the end of our time, Margaret. I know. So it's been it's gone quite quickly, fantastic. hasn't it? It has. It does. It <laughs> always goes really quickly, <laughs> and quickly. hopefully, it does sound like you've completely forgotten about being nervous whatsoever. So that's good. Well, I, I'm still a little. I'm still a little bit, and I waffle. I I apologise to people that are watching because I waffle. I go on and on and on, and you must stop me, Fiona. <laughs> Well, I'll stop you to say that Rosie says she works in a charity shop and all her stuff oh. comes from there. So yes, a kindred yes. spirit there, absolutely, yes. And it's amazing what you can find in them. And I mean, oh, I, I don't it's... throw stuff out into the rubbish. If there's anything that can be worn, it goes to yeah. the charity shop. To the if charity it's really shop. too bad, and, you know, there are some things yeah. that charity shops wouldn't want. But I still... I'll either still give it to them in a separate bag, which they can sell for yes. bag to raise money, yes. or it might be worth, um, you know, using it for painting rags or something. And yes, yes. Steph, uh, oh, Sammy yeah. says you're definitely not waffling. No, oh. I don't think you're waffling up there. It's been great She's fun. too kind. <laughs> it, it's been absolutely fantastic having you on, Margaret. Um, I'd just like to tell it's been a pleasure have... honestly i've enjoyed it and thank you for the opportunity because this is something totally new to me um yeah. and it's well i've enjoyed i have enjoyed it despite the nerves i have enjoyed good. it good i'd just like to point out we did meet on facebook in a poetry group which is the that's Ball right Den poetry group so if anyone would like to see some more of margaret's poems and read them there wolves den poetry like the animals wolves um go on there there's some amazing poets on there and if you like poetry at all i think you'd really enjoy that um ali one of my other guests is also on there as well so um do check that out if you'd like to thank you everybody so much for watching whether you're live with us now and uh if or if you're watching on replay thanks so much for that and if you do put any more comments in once we finish the actual live part, then we'll try and get back to you as soon as we can. Oh, Steph says, great show. You've both been great. 
That's a real <laughs> thank thumbs up. You. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank That's you so brilliant. much. Um, so thank you again, Margaret. Lovely to have you on the show. No technical thank you, Fiona. problems today. Um, so we're good. And I hope that you'll come back again in due course. And if, also well, if you'll, you'll, if you'll have me, if you'll I have me, I will. definitely will. And, and also, if you would mind sending me your poem so that in due course I can put it on Facebook. Of course. To yourself, of course. Of course painting so that would be lovely so okay. thanks everyone again thanks ever so much and i'll be back next week next wednesday 7 p.m uk time as normal and uh, look forward to seeing you all then sammy enjoy the poem i think you will love it take care everybody take care bye bye bye, now. Fiona. bye. bye.